I have been stuck in my house social distancing for almost two months now, and I think it's finally getting to me. I've been working on a project that I've been told by my wife I'm not allowed to use in the house, and I'm ready to show it to you. Let's do this. Before I show you my masterpiece of technology, we have a sponsor for this video. Roll that ad, John. Hey there, are you tired of those boring trips to the bathroom? Is your quest for a number one and number two lacking excitement? Well now, you can turn that frown upside down with... The RGB Toilet Seat! It's like a 70s disco dance floor you can poop through! It's bright and colorful and not tacky at all! Just look at these features! It's got 124 RGB LEDs! Countless color combinations and patterns! It uses Bluetooth! And Corsair didn't make it! Nothing says I love you like an RGB toilet seat! She's bound to love you now! So hurry and get yours now for only $300! Limited stock because we're only making one and we're not making another! That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that I have created what might be the first RGB toilet seat, and I'm gonna show you how I did it. The first thing I needed to do when I came up with this crazy idea was to find a mold for the seat. One quick Google search, and I had found an epoxy resin toilet seat mold on Etsy for a grand total of $54. Yes, you can literally find anything on Etsy. The design is very simple. The plan is to embed an RGB strip in a resin mold and cast it into place with a clear epoxy resin. The plan is to set the digital RGB strip facing outward so that when uh, seated, the room is bathed in 360 degrees of RGB goodness. The first thing I realized when I was putting this all together was that the RGB strip doesn't want to lay evenly in the mold, so I needed to come up with a way to keep them as level as possible in the mold when the epoxy starts to set. So it was Tinkercad and 3D printing to the rescue. I wanted to design a simple part that would slip over the RGB strip and achieve two things. One, help prop the strip up from laying on the bottom of the mold, and two, try to make the strip sit in the middle of the mold. Now to the 3D printer, where we print up a bunch of these parts to make it around the circumference of the opening in the seat, and then insert the strips and move them into position. Now that we've added the printed parts, we can measure where to cut the strip and cut the strip to size. Here's the finished strip placed in the mold before we start mixing epoxy. The epoxy I found on Amazon is a one-to-one -one mixture, meaning mixing it takes equal parts resin to hardener. I did the smart thing before I started this silly adventure and attempted to measure out how much epoxy was needed for the mold by filling the mold with cups of water until it was full. This gave me the exact amount of epoxy that I would need to fill this thing up. If you're interested, it ended up being 72 fluid ounces of water. So, we'll be mixing 36 ounces of resin with 36 ounces of hardener. This will take two batches of 18 ounces to run because I don't have mixing containers large enough to hold all 72 ounces at once. Here's the big moment. Let's roll some suspenseful music while I do this. In between pourings, I'm going to blast the surface of the epoxy with a propane torch. This was a trick I saw on the internet to help remove bubbles from the epoxy and give it that smooth, glassy shine. It has been about an hour and some, and so now the epoxy that we've already poured has settled and set a bit. So we're going to do the second batch to fill in the rest of the way and let this thing run overnight so that we can see how it looks in the morning. Let's get to it. Now it's time to wait till tomorrow for the epoxy to fully cure and then we'll pull it out. Okay, it is done, completed. I have put the mold into the freezer. Why did I do that? Because I read that that is a good way to pop out an epoxy casting out of a mold. So I have a slightly frozen toilet seat and we are going to pull this thing out now. It is out of the mold. It is sitting right here. You can't see it. I'm gonna light it up and we're gonna see what this looks like together. I can't wait. Let's do this. Look at this thing! It is so awesome! <laughs> there is some extra work left to do here on this seat now that we've pulled it out of the mold. There's some overflow edges on here that we have to cut off and sand down. All of the edges have to be sanded around because they are sharp and uh, that would not be a good thing to have on a toilet seat. So we'll take care of that and then the next thing after that will be to mount the hardware, get it set up and light it up and see what it looks like in place. 
Using a pair of snips, I removed the excess overhang and sanded the inside and outside edges with high grit sandpaper. A toilet seat of this magnitude requires only the best in blank. So we're gonna install some chromed out hardware. on the video where we talk about the results of well my toilet seat in my my crazy idea um, first things first I'm partially in love with it and I partially think it is the most repulsive thing I've ever made <laughs> it's got RGB guys and I love RGB so much that you could you could literally wrap anything in RGB and be like want and um, so it has that it's also extremely ridiculous and impractical and oversized and the mold didn't work really well, but you know, I did my best and um, it's still pretty. There's wires hanging off the back of the toilet seat that you sit on. So many things wrong with it. Um, on the other side, it is beautiful when it's lit and it's doing its patterns. It is stunning and it makes you want to just stare at it more than you're going to stare at a regular toilet seat, so I think that's a win. And um, I don't recommend you do this at home. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've, I've really come to enjoy epoxy, and I think that I'm going to use more epoxy in things just because the possibilities are kind of endless. And obviously, the possibilities for making toilet seats has ended. No more of those. But other things where I can integrate RGB into it and use epoxy is kind of like this big hard shell that uh, kind of spreads light. Can't wait to do that. But yeah, it was just a crazy project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do it for our video today. I genuinely hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed making it. Would love to know what you think, believe it or not. So get down in those comments and let me know. If this is the first time you've seen the channel, please consider subscribing because it really helps us out and keeps us making videos, especially videos like this, but also our testing videos. Speaking of testing, we have a website right here. We put all the results from all the tests we do of our fans, our CPU coolers, all that great stuff. You can find it there. If you are a Twitter and Instagram user, please consider following us there. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.